Hello and in this video we're going to make low poly and high poly of the door. So in here we already have this system and we're going to make some room here to make the low poly and high poly. So I'm going to move this down here for the moment. So first let's make the high poly. From this we're going to make the high poly and we can for example start by using a divide to make sure our model as is triangulated. So usually I use the voxel node to make my high poly. So if I plug in my voxel node here, we can see that we have a higher density going on. We can also see that it's merging results together. Also for baking, we don't want any intersections, so we need some spacing in between them. So first let's also make sure they are evenly spaced out. And we can do this by a for loop. So for loop on named primitive. So we can use an attribute in here. And if you remember correctly, we made an attribute called ID index. And with this index, it's going to loop based on this attribute you we set up for each part. Then we're going to also need the metadata. And we're going to have to transform and in this transform every every loop I want to move a certain piece forward so what I'm going to type in here so I want the detail of the for loop which is here called for each for each metadata then I want the number of iterations so this should be the expression you have so we want the details of the for each begin and we want the iteration. So when pressing apply, we can see that they are now evenly split down. We can see that they are not connected anymore to each other. And also for baking, this will make it easier if the baker looks over one element each at a time, instead of having everything in one space and will have some overlapping issues. So something important to know is the feature bounding box relative. So let's say that this is my door and I want to make it way more bigger. And as you could see, we are losing a lot of quality. So if my door goes from a small size like this to an extreme size like this, you're going to have some troubles in the voxel. And this is then the bounding box feature where if we disable it, it's going to stay more consistent along scaled objects. So this is important to know. So in here, I'm going to start with 0, 0, 003. This might be too low. And I'm also going to enable project to original and enable a little bit of smoothing. So for the moment, I'm going to work with this lower resolution. So normally I would go to around 2 or 3 million. But in this case, I'm going to stay for the moment on some lower poly count because it's like easier to work with. What I also want to, for example, keep in mind is that I want to have some color IDs. I want to be able to control certain panels in game engine and change the color. I'm going to split my high poly. If you remember from the first video, we actually made a group called panels, which are these. And from these panels, we're going to create a high poly. So we're going to copy the voxel. So now we have these panels. Then I want to color them. Let's, for example, color them blue. And here I want to just color them black. Then also, I mentioned that it would be nice if we have some glowing effect going on on the door. And I also want to color them this part to make sure we have this information stored in a map. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm sort of like building up a color map that we can then bake out. I'm going to go back up here where we created this piece. So I need this primitive and I'm going to use a null node and I'm going to call it out, out glow. And here with the object merge node, referencing it back here and I'm simply gonna transform this piece. I'm gonna center my pivot in the object 
and I'm going to put a large scale in the x axis. So let's say 10. And you can see that 10 is actually not enough because I moved my point here. And I'm not going to. So we can actually move it here or we can scale it bigger. But normally this point should al always be the last one. So that's here. And then we can make a group. And then we set it to points. And we enable the bounding block region and select bounding objects. And you can already see it's working. It's selecting points on both sides. And I'm going to call the group color glow. And we create a color node. And in this color node, we have the group called color grow we just created. And we can already see that it's coloring that part. And then we can, for example, put it in red. You can also start blurring this information if you want to by just using a attribute blur. And we need to take the color, of course, first. And then we can blur this information a bit. So it's a little bit smoother. This is also based on your poly count. So of course, I have a lower resolution for the moment to work with. So it's not going to look great, but it's definitely usable. Then we can merge these together. And this is then our base of the high poly with some color maps. Then I'm going to create more maps to use in game engine. If you have watched a great tutorial, we did something similar where we created some edge damage, for example. But in here, I'm going to use a different approach. So just to show you, we can make some variations on this. So what we can actually do is we can, uh, first of all, color everything in black. Then we can calculate the curvature. So as you can see here, we then have the curvature. And I'm mainly interested in the green information. And the green information I will be using for the edge damaging. And I'm going to increase some of the range and intensity. So it might look very intense now. And this is also because we are working on a low resolution. If we have more resolution, this will be a little bit more thin. Then what I also want is the occlusion. And this can take some time based on the settings you are going to fill in. And this is then the occlusion. Again, we are working here with some lower resolution, so I'll keep that in mind. And the reason why I do the, use the occlusion is, for example, here. I don't have some of the red values. should be also here, ideally, but we don't have that. So if I calculate the occlusion, I have some darker values here. So for example, I can boost this by the color adjustments. If for a mask, I actually want to invert and then you can sort of like boost these values if you want to. So we want these wider values to use later for adding some uh, dirt and roughness variation. And now I want to combine these. So if you want to use this in one, sing one single map, we already have the blue channel and the red channel. So we only have the green channel left to store these two uh, informations. So I want to merge these two together in sort of like a curvature map. So first of all, I'm going to create a new color. And this should be 0.5. So we have this gray value. And then I'm going to use a FOP, a point FOP, and plug in all the inputs here. So here we have the information of the first input, which is this grayscale. But I also want access to the other inputs. So I'm going to import the point attributes from the other inputs. So in here we can say which input, and I want the second input. And I would like to have the color. And this is then same for the other input, which is then the third input. And now I can start combining colors together. But first, I need to go from a vector 
to the float. Right now they are all vectors, so they are all RGB. But I want to have a certain color from these. So what I first do is using a subtract from our base color or grayscale that will be subtracting from the third input. And if you view this, I can see now that I have subtracted this value and we can see the darker values going on here. And then I want to add the edge information we have in the second input. And this is stored, if I go back here, in the green channel. I have to pick out the green one, so the middle one. And I'm going to add this to this input. And when plugging in here, we can now also see this edge. And just to make sure everything is in a zero to one space, I'm going to clamp the values. And we see that this, the intensity was too high of this, and now it's more neutral. So the result should do, should look something like this. So this is then this is then a grayscale that can be stored with the color ID. To use this then in Unity, I can demonstrate this here. We're gonna sort of like reverse some of the math here. So we know that our base value was uh, 0 0.5. So I'm gonna create a constant here, 0 0.5, and what if I subtract again from 0 0.5? And then we can see our result is that ambient occlusion that we calculated. And what if we then reverse this? And then we can have the edge information. So we can use the single grayscale value to get then two different masks. So I just wanted to show you this other approach compared to the compared to the crate videos. So you can make variations on what you need. And then the next step will be merging all the maps together. And again, we're gonna use a point fob. Our first input will be the color ID and our second input will be the masks. And again, we need to import the information first of the inputs. So import detail, then I want the information for my second input and I would like to have the color and then I can start merging them together. But first of all, we need to go from a vector to a float. Then and then we need to go back from a float to a vector. And this is then my masks, and this is then the red. So we have something that looks like this as result. And I'm gonna name this node so I know what they're doing. So this is then ready to bake. The only thing we need now for baking is our low poly. For our low poly, I also want to do a different approach than in the other videos I did. So what I usually did is I would go here to my voxels and I would just uh, use the poly reduce and I would reduce it until I have a nice result. So normally I would use this approach, but I want to show you that it can also be done in a different way. If I go back here, I actually want to use the model I have created here. I want to use these models. So for example, here I'm going to place down null nodes and these no nodes, I will giving them a name like out, outdoor panels. And I'm going to do that also for the other parts, like this panel as well, an outdoor. Then I also would like to have these details. So these are not really low poly. So what I actually did is I made my own low poly version of this. So you can also do that. And then I use the same information here on a copy to points. And then I have a lower version. And I'm also going to use the no note here. And I'm going to call it door details. Then I'm going here to the top piece. And also here using the null nodes and frame top 
then here as well calling this the frame site and then we have here this piece and what I'm actually going to do is I go back here to the beginning tube I'm just going to copy this piece for now and let's see how well this works I'm going to move it like this and I'm going to lower the poly count uh, something like this maybe something that's not too low and then I will use the symmetry again here and I can actually get rid of this line by using dissolving and then here again placing a null node and door lock then here on the side I'm gonna use the object merge node to get all this information I just created I'm gonna speed up this part a bit So merging them all together should result in the door. But of course, some pieces are not placed correctly. And I think I forgot actually one piece. So also here, door side. And using an object merge. So let's first start with the door. So this is a door piece. This is door piece and this also, and we also need the lock of the door. So these are all door pieces. So if you merge this together, we should have this door. Then a few more things we need to do is go back here where we created the original version and I'm going to copy this bottom part. So everything is the same. So it's now symmetrized and we also have the attribute here. Then here we have the frames. I'm going to do the same as I just did with the door is I go back to the original here and I'm going to copy this part here. I'm going to copy this part here and I'm going to place it on the top and so the top piece are now the same. We could also again here uh, dissolve this flattened edge. Then same for the side frames. I'm going to this part here and copy paste it. So we have the same results. So this makes more sense now. Then we have the lock left and I only need this uh, index actually. So normally if we would combine everything together, we should have this result. And this result is then basically this result, but without all the detailing going on. So we can actually see that we don't have a lot of primitives going on right now. So it's very low. So even if we quickly divide it to see the triangulated version, we still have a quite low uh, number compared to the poly reduce. So if I go back here to the poly reduce and I filled in 2000 in the numbers, what I can see clearly here is that this lock part is getting quite low in poly count and it doesn't look that nice anymore. But for the other pieces, the poly reduce is doing a decent job in reducing the polys so that's something to keep in mind and to know what you want so this this takes a little time to set up if you need to go make something fast then you can just use poly reducing so i'm gonna make a frame around this i noticed one little mistake here i forgot is this piece is not being placed correctly so i forgot to copy this centering that we did here. So we're gonna just copy paste this here. So the issue is fixed then as well. So now it's placed correctly. And I'm gonna start unwrapping. So I'm gonna use the game dev auto unwrapper. And I like to set it to UV unwrap. And also to use the axis align 
so the UV shells will follow the axis and then I need to add the normals so game dev normals and I'm gonna harden the UV seams so this is then for example ready to use to bake but in here I I split up my high poly in different pieces and we can do the same by copying this for loop and we can simply copy paste it here and plug in this model and if everything is correctly set up it should immediately show the same result except the low poly version so remember we are looking at the id index if you for example would miss some of the id index pieces you can see that the order is not correctly anymore so it's important that the attribute index is correctly set up so we can also do this after uv and i also would like to divide my model in triangles just so i don't have any issues for baking or going in game engines something that i also like to do here is using a switch and i would place it here and the reason why i do this is I, I told it in previous videos if i don't use the switch node that means that every time i make a small change the uv is going to be recalculated every time this can sometimes slow down some of the speed in game engines so if you are still prototyping and blocking out the shape of your door you don't need any uvs then but when you start baking you're gonna of course need the uvs i want to enable the uvs so this is then ready to use and uh, let's move this here and i'm gonna break this line over here and move this block in the system so here we can use these to start baking so this is the low poly and this is then the high poly so this is then ready for baking so the baking options that we need are the normal map and the vertex color that's the only two maps uh, we're gonna need from this so later i will also expose these values in the hd then we need to connect this back and we actually don't need this normals here anymore but i'm gonna move it here so if we don't have any uvs we're gonna still apply a normal and then we Move it back here in the system so if everything is correct we should have now this version this causes one problem is that we don't see the details at the moment so if i would like to see my details i need to switch to my original geometry this one so remember in the last video we actually made this uh, switch notes to preview the model that for previewing is to switch between our low poly and our preview of the of a detailed model so we can delete these nodes here and copy one of them and i'm going to use this here and i will also rename it in the hda i want to place another node here just to keep a little bit of structure out to our details and using an object merge node and now we can switch between these versions you can also use this version as your little poly if you want to but this is a lot of polygons but if you want to use it as your little poly version you're just going to simply move it up here and then switch between this one and this one then you can just also use that as your low poly version and i'm gonna call it preview details then open the property menu and we're gonna make a new folder here called baking and going here to the baker and you can just drag and drop this information another way of getting this information is going here from notes and look for the baker 
I'm going to just type in here the name maps baker and in here we can basically see all this information from the baker itself and if we scroll down to the bottom we can see these folders so bake bake options attributes which are representing these values for example fully select this whole thing and drag it in here but I've already dragged the button and the file name and I only need these values I don't need to preview channel and we can just drag that in here as you could see so that also works as well and here I'm going to call it preview details and also here I need a toggle I would like to have a toggle here for enabling UVs so I have my toggle right here and I'm going to reference it in the switch node toggle UV that's also set up that I can switch that. So now everything is set up to switch back to Unity and test out the Baker. So here I'm in Unity and we can simply rebuild our asset to get the latest version and we can now see we have also this option for baking and now I'm going to bake and I'm going to make sure first of all I need to enable my UVs then fill in a direction where I want to save it so in my case I will save it here in the texture folder set the resolution you would like and also the surface normal and a distance for the ray so everything is set up and i'm going to click bake and wait a few moments so in here i finished the bake and you can see that i have also made a material just a standard material to test out my results and we can see that i actually did a good job of baking the normal map also quickly showing the masks and I can clearly see the edge information I have increased the intensity of the curvature because it's because it's then very clear to see at the moment and I can also see my ID map so the blue panels and also this piece to glow so everything is set up nicely and in the next video we're going to use these uh, maps to then generate the final material and we're also going to set up colliders and make sure an animation is automatically triggered when a player is going to walk close to the door.